I the a-hole for telling my friend she's reaping what she sowed? At the beginning of quarantine, my friend Bella, female 30, proposed open marriage to her husband Mike, male 28. The timing was off, obviously, but she had thought about it a lot and she said it was the only way for her relationship with Mike to survive because she loved him dearly, but felt unfulfilled. Mike hesitantly agreed because he didn't want to lose her. When I asked him about it, he seemed very much not thrilled about the whole thing. Backstory here is that Bella and Mike have known each other since middle school, but only started dating in college, at which point Bella had a lot more experience in relationships. Mike has told me he's always felt like he was one step behind her in most things, but that their marriage really worked and he was very happy with her. Well, during quarantine, the two of them became even closer than they had ever been before. And I think Mike didn't expect Bella to actually go through with the open relationship idea she had proposed. But around three months ago, she brought it back up and then settled on some rules together. Cut forward to an hour ago, it's way past midnight here, when Bella calls me crying saying Mike cheated on her. I'm all question marks at that point because Mike would never. She tells me she tried calling Mike all day, but he said he had a date and hasn't come home yet. I ask her, but wasn't that sort of okay between you two? She sobbingly tells me that yes, that was sort of the deal. But that she hadn't been able to go on a single date with a guy yet because she was so busy with work being back on now. And that Mike just went ahead with his date as if she meant nothing. That he hadn't disclosed any details to her. Which as far as I know is part of their deal, that they didn't want to know any details. And that she felt like he was ridiculing her. I didn't really know what to say. I just told her, well, honey, I think you just raped what you sowed, honestly. She's furious with me and screamed at me for being an awful friend to her, that I should understand how she feels. I kept quiet, but honestly, I think she's just upset that her husband is doing what she proposed in the first place. I haven't talked to Mike yet, but am I the a-hole? Edit. Spoke with Mike just now. He said he had an awesome night but came home to Bella screaming at him and is feeling incredibly guilty and confused now. Understandably, he'll come by after work to talk. Now for the top comments. Yeah, not today, hole. People always seem to be down for open relationships until they remember their partner can have an open relationship too. And it often seems that the partner who originally proposed the idea ends up striking out while the hesitant partner hits the home run. I'm not sure that's necessarily true. But I do find that often when the hesitant one does succeed more than the suggester, the suggester gets bent out of shape far worse than is reasonable. Not today, ho. I'll bet money that what her friend was really thinking is that she'd convince her husband to try an open relationship but he loved her too much to ever sleep with anyone else. She thought it would be a win-win for her. Her husband would be at home loving her and she'd be out getting her back blown out and it would all be legit because the husband agreed to an open marriage. Not today, Hull. She didn't expect him to actually sleep with other people. She just wanted to sleep with others without it being considered cheating. She's really ridiculous. And I'm on Mike's side for this one. She wanted an open relationship, so that's what she got. Lol. That's what most people want in an open relationship. The opportunity to sleep around with a fallback. Be careful what you ask for. You might well get it. Your friend felt unfulfilled and wanted someone to meet her needs. She never considered that in an open marriage. Both spouses are free to go elsewhere. She said he cheated, but he did no such thing. It isn't cheating in an open marriage. Your friend's reality check just bounced. Not day hole. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for walking out of a house after the host told me to feel free to leave because she doesn't like people in her house? This just happened like an hour ago. Backstory. Dating this guy and his best friend was having a small party, if you can call it that. There were 10 people there at most. I wasn't invited, but his boyfriend told me it would be okay if I came. Usually I wouldn't go somewhere without an invite. But since this is his best friend's house, I assumed that he knew the situation better than me. I show up, go inside, meet the best friend and she didn't know I was coming. Boyfriend says, hey, this is who I told you about. I wanted you guys to meet. The best friend turns to me with a straight face and says, Yeah, it's alright, I guess. But feel free to leave because I don't really like people in my house. So, I left. I turned around and walked out without saying another word. Now, to be completely fair, my boyfriend was shocked. He came after me, 
and said that he had no idea that she would react that way, but she was just having a bad night, and that we should go back in and everything will be okay. Obviously, I laughed, and he didn't come with me. But now he is texting me and saying that while she was a bit rude, I was even more rude for just walking out in front of everyone, and that it made for a weird vibe with all of his other friends who were there. So, am I the a-hole? Did I overreact? I should mention, there is a language barrier here. She speaks Greek slash Italian as first languages, and I speak English. So honestly, her intent was questionable. But the look on her face gave me a weird vibe. Interesting conversation below. Does boyfriend have the right to invite someone into someone else's home? This is a tough one, because it's sometimes yes, and sometimes no. I've done this before if the vibe was right. But mostly, I don't do it. I would just ask first. So I kind of understand if he thought it was a situation where it would be okay, but turned out not to be okay. Conflicted. Not today, Hall. Your boyfriend plus his friend are. He didn't come with you when you left, and that's an a-hole move right there. P.S. Does she have the hots for your boyfriend and that's why she was rude to you? So you would leave, and she could do stuff with slash to him? Nah, nothing going on between them. Incompatible genitalia preferences. Not today, Hull. And if I was dating him and he decided to return back to the party after that interaction, I wouldn't be dating him any longer. For him to put Opie in that position in the first place was bad enough, but then letting Opie walk out and leave alone? He really doubled down on Nahal with that move. As for BFF, English may not be her first language, but I think her message came across loud and clear. Not Nahal. Not Nahal. No. He did you wrong by sending you into a place you were not invited, had a host insult you, and then gets mad you leave? No, do not apologize. What the hell is he complaining about? He still stayed for the party while you ended up going home. Not today, Hall. That was a very reasonable reaction after being treated that way. Much more polite than I would have been. My only confusion is why you didn't immediately dump the boyfriend for going back into the party. And you're waiting until a bit later to do that for some reason. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Eh, we are in that weird, dating but not exactly exclusive stage, so there wouldn't even be a formal breakup. We just wouldn't see each other again, if that makes sense. For the next story, am I the a-hole for calling my friend jealous and insecure? My friend Aisha, 22 female, has a history of going after our friend's old crushes slash fling slash boyfriends etc. She went after my ex-boyfriend when we were 18. Went after our friend's ex-boyfriend freshman year of college, etc. No one had ever said anything about it for one reason or another, because other than this, Aisha was a really good friend. She has never gone for a guy that no one else has gone for either, especially with me. She's gone after most of the guys I've talked to, after we were done talking, and I didn't mind until now. Most of our friends used to like Jaden, my current boyfriend, 22 male. Aisha, along with four other girls, liked Jaden when we were 19, but he never entertained them. We were all in the same friend group, but Jaden and I never really talked until a few months ago when we ran into each other. He lost touch with a lot of people in the friend group and hadn't talked to Aisha in years. We ended up talking and now we're dating. When Aisha found out, she started texting Jaden and asking him to hang out. It got to the point where she'd complained to me about him not responding to her. I told Jaden I don't mind him hanging out with her to catch up, but that Aisha has a history of doing this kind of thing and catching feelings. So if he does see her, he should make it clear he isn't interested. They ended up never hanging out and Jaden doesn't respond to her texts. Aisha kept being persistent and texting him. She continued to complain to me about him not responding and eventually complained to all of our friends. It made everyone uncomfortable. I didn't say anything, until the other day when she brought up how Jaden had said he would date her. Someone asked who he would date if he had to pick from the group of girls who liked him when we were 19. I said her. I was there for it, and I'm not bothered by it. I told Aisha he said if he had to pick from the girls who liked him, he would have picked you. Nothing else. He didn't and doesn't see you in that way. I told her it made me uncomfortable how she talked about Jaden and said, You're acting like you had a crush on him. And whether or not you do, he's with me, and that's not going to change. Aisha told me I sounded jealous, and I said, No, I'm annoyed. Jealous would imply you have something I don't, and believe me, that isn't the case. 
If you can't get a guy without him being with one of us first, that's on your own jealousy and insecurities. Stop trying to get with my boyfriend and everyone else's. It's not cute, and you're doing yourself a disservice. You can't go after our exes then complain about how you feel like you're a second choice. He should stop talking to me after that. While all of our friends think it needed to be said, some think I crossed the line by insulting her and think I should have just said she was making us uncomfortable. Edit. Aisha's now been trying to claim she was just trying to catch up with Jaden since they used to be close friends and that it took things the wrong way. She said she was just joking around and that it wasn't that serious. However, after some digging around, I found out that when Jaden and I started talking, she started asking around about him. A mutual friend told me that she was convinced Jaden liked her and was going to ask her out because she saw TikTok saying a guy with the letter J was going to come into her life and that she should expect some romance. She also found out Jaden kept a painting she made for him for Secret Santa back during freshman year of college and saw it as a sign. I told Jaden all of this and he has since thrown out the painting and blocked her and everything. Now for the comments. Not Dayhal and wow. No, I'm annoyed. Jealous would imply you have something I don't. And believe me, that isn't the case. If you can't get a guy without him being with one of us first, that's on your own jealousy and insecurities. Damn, girl. I couldn't have said that better myself. Good for you. Maybe your comments hurt her feelings, but sometimes that's necessary to get your point across. Some people don't respond to nice and need to be told they're being a nahal in order for them to realize it. She needed to hear this. On another note, why is anyone in your group asking your boyfriend to choose a second choice from the group? That's super inappropriate and irrelevant. It also bound to start trouble, which it did. You should ask your friends to steer clear of asking dumb and pointless questions like this. Not day hall. Pointing out someone is insecure or jealous isn't insulting them. Unless more was said that you are leaving out. To be honest, I'm surprised Opie's friend group hasn't said anything to Aisha about her behavior before now, especially with the whole going after the ex-boyfriends thing. All that's done is embolden her to now start going after actual boyfriends. Yikes. Definitely not today, Hull. It needed to be said. Edited to Ed. Your boyfriend also needs to nip this in the bud and make it clear to Aisha that he has no intention of meeting with her alone and that he's not interested in her. Not saying he's an a-hole, but he needs to set firm boundaries and slash or block her number if she keeps persisting. A couple of girls have come close to saying something, but it never bothered us too much since she'd usually do it once the relationship was already over. In most cases, their relationships ended because my friends and I were the ones who ended it, so while it was uncomfortable for us to see her go after our exes, it wasn't like we were heartbroken over them, so we'll let it go. She wouldn't get anywhere with our exes either. Usually, they would seek her for comfort, but she'd complain about being second choice, then stop talking to them. Aisha also has a history of struggling with depression and anxiety, and we didn't want to do anything to worsen her mental health. We thought it was better to just let it go. She's never been like this where she's made a move while we were still together, so that's why I finally said something. Not today, Hull, and maybe consider dropping that front because holy insecurity, Batman. She has zero place complaining about how your boyfriend isn't texting her back, much less to the entire group. I'm surprised you put up with it for that long. She needed that line boldly drawn, though. She wouldn't have stopped by just being told you made people uncomfortable. I honestly thought I was just jealous at first, until a few of our friends told me how it was weird and uncomfortable how much she was talking about my boyfriend. Once I realized how everyone else felt the same way as me, I realized it wasn't jealousy, just annoyance and anger at her disrespect for my relationship. Last story is titled, Am I the A-hole? Wife wants a bigger ring after five years. Wife and I got engaged, and I paid cash for engagement ring. I didn't have a set amount I wanted to spend, but got a ring just under one carat. The ring is beautiful, and I spent a long time on the details. It isn't huge, but she has a tiny hand, so it is actually really proportional. I was never thrilled about the idea of supporting the diamond industry, but I understand cultural symbolism and like shiny things myself. Now that we have more money, she wants to get a new engagement ring. Since we were more limited in funds a few years ago, her belief is that we should get her a ring more in line with what we can afford now, and it always ends in an argument. It kinda rubs me the wrong way, 
And she says, I'm an a-hole about it because I'm making it out to be that she's materialistic or only wants it for status or even just to feel better about herself, which is still an issue in my mind. Her case is that she will wear it forever until we change income brackets probably. And why shouldn't it be something nicer? Am I the a-hole for not wanting to do this or pointing out that it is compensating slash image related? It feels like she just thinks she can upgrade it away. And then she is wearing a ring that isn't even the one I gave her. And it isn't because she lost it or it was damaged, but just because she wants something better. Honestly, it grosses me out. And then I am so put off, I kind of become a nehal that feels unappreciated. Would something like an anniversary ring that won't replace the engagement ring meet everyone's needs? Five years is a milestone. You could turn this into a piece of jewelry that's special in its own right. No a-holes here. I'm with you. Add to the band in the form of an anniversary band. If it were me, I'd want different stones like blue, green or red, sapphire or something, making it really special. Maybe something they designed together with a jeweler. Just a thought, but replacing the stone seems wrong somehow, as if it weren't good enough to represent who they were when they got engaged. More like representing their stages of life. Info. Was your wife involved in picking out the first ring? It's bound to be unpopular, but I think buying someone an engagement ring they are expected to wear for life without input isn't always a great idea. My husband proposed to me with a plain silver band with the word placeholder engraved on the inside because he knew he'd never be able to pick something my picky self would like. My husband proposed with a fake $20 ring, and there was a note in the ring box that said, P.S. The ring is fake, but my love for you is real. And then he gave me the budget and I designed my own ring. Perfect.